colleagues who are going to uh, walk us through this presentation and question and answer today. Uh, first is Anan Jahi, the program director at New Economy Coalition. Um, and second is Mike Sandmel, who is listed as Eli Fagali, perhaps on your screen, but in fact is Mike Sandmel, our coalition engagement manager. So I'm very pleased to uh, have joined the NEC team last year and very excited about my first Common Bound coming together um, behind the scenes, in front of the scenes, and at the conference. So take it away, Mike and Anant. Thank you so much, Jonathan. Um, and I also I just want to make sure that we're not uh, speaking into the void. So if someone participating on, in the chat box could just confirm that you can hear us and everything looks great, I would appreciate that. Um, it should be in your control panel. Um, but I will uh, talk a little bit about Common Bound. This is our fourth major conference. Um, you can think about it as a national conference, really it's sort of North American conference. We, our network includes a lot of groups in Canada, um, and we also obviously have a recognition that um, we can't only think in national terms, that this work has, has global implications and needs to involve global voices, and, and um, that will be a part of Common Bound as well. But like I said, it's our fourth major gathering in the last five years. Um, I took a look at the attendees uh, for this webinar, and I, I know that many of you uh, we're at Common Bound 2014 in Boston, which uh, I thought was a really remarkable gathering um, of over 700 people from a really wide array of social movements, sectors of the new economy, uh, all wrestling with this same fundamental question of how do we how do we fundamentally transform our economy? How do we get beyond sort of um, piecemeal reform and look at what does a, a just and sustainable economy really look like and how do we get there? Um, I know that people walked away from that conference really inspired, really connected to new ideas and new organizations. Um, I even heard about, um, and actually I'm in conversation with some groups, new organizations that were founded out of conversations that started at that gathering. Um, so really a, a dynamic space and we're hoping to recreate that energy, um, recreate that, that sense of common purpose and also add some, some really important new elements. Um, so, Anand, if you can talk about one of those. Thanks, Mike and Jonathan. Hi, everybody. I'm Anand, Program Director here at NEC. Um, one thing that we're really excited about this year for Common Bound is that we're going to be holding it in Buffalo, New York. Um, we went through a pretty long process of determining where we were going to hold Common Bound, and we landed on Buffalo because it's a city that's endured a lot of pain at the hands of the old economy, but um, it's also become a hotbed of new economy organizing. Groups there are building new political culture, community power, economic institutions that anchor community-owned green economy and housing, energy, food, and a lot more. Um, another really exciting thing about Buffalo is um, one of our membership organizations there pushed Buffalo. We worked really closely with them. Um, while we were determining where we were going to hold the conference, and we've continued to work closely with them in terms of figuring out how to do this in a responsible way in Buffalo. So they've been a great partner, um, and they've introduced us to the Buffalo Just Transition Roundtable, which is um, a number of comprised of a number of groups in Buffalo that's going to serve as our local host committee. And the idea behind that is that um, we don't want to just swoop in and swoop out and um, we could have done the conference anywhere. We want to really ground it in Buffalo. We want to support the organizing that's happening there and we want to learn and um, develop ourselves and, and the movement in general from what's going on in Buffalo. Um, and so we're hoping to work closely with those organizations on the host committee to develop that. Thanks, Anand. And uh, apologies for my I now see that everyone has put in the, the chat in the question box, not the chat box, that they can hear fine. So uh, I, there, it's a, it looks like a question box from the participant side. So thank you. I, I really appreciate all of you letting me know that. Um, yeah, so Anand, do you want to talk a little bit about uh, our new format? Sure. Um, so another exciting um, 
aspect of the conference this year is this format. So in the past, we've been really inspired by the Allied Media Conference um, that AMP puts on because it's so participatory. It's made by the movement for the movement. And so we've, um, we've aimed to do something similar with Common Bound, and we're borrowing their structure. Um, and so the way the conference is organized this year is Friday will be a day of network gatherings. Um, Saturday and Sunday is going to be the conference, so that's where we're going to have keynotes, plenaries, uh, and also workshop tracks. So in the past, Common Bound was a lot of workshops, and they were related to each other in varying degrees. This year, we're organizing the workshops into more cohesive tracks. And finally, Monday is going to be NEC's member organization annual meeting. Yeah. Um, so uh, we'll dig into two of these on this call. Um, we'll talk a little bit about the network gatherings and the workshop tracks, which is where we're really looking um, to, to work with all of you and to work. We've already been in conversation with a lot of groups that are interested in um, contributing to, to gatherings and to tracks. Um, and we'll start with the gatherings. Um, let's see. So the gatherings, as I said, are they're day long spaces um, for either pre existing networks, new networks, um, other organizations to hold convenings of people. Um, We've opened up to groups between 20 and 100 participants. Um, and they'll be proposed and organized by volunteers. Um, so we're hoping that some of the, those volunteers are uh, participating in this webinar right now. Um, they can also they can be open, or they can also be closed door sessions. It can be a mixture of both. And uh, we're going to go into more detail about what they'll look like. Yeah. So uh, a little bit about sort of what we're looking for from, from proposals and what we're looking for for the kind of gatherings we want to have happen. Um, you know, we think these are, there's going to be a lot of folks in Buffalo, a lot of great folks, a lot of energy. And we know that so often the most important conversations happen off to the side and there isn't enough time for them. And so we really want to say, look, before the, before the sort of main event starts, We've got the space, we'll give you the room, have the conversations you need to have. Um, but we want to prioritize conversations that are about deep systemic change towards justice and sustainability. That's core to, uh, you know, core to the, the whole point of the conference. Um, we really want to advance connectivity and collaboration between different groups um, and also leadership development. Right? How do we bring new leadership into this movement? Can we use these space to do trainings, to do popular education. Um, we're looking for proposals that are described really clearly. That's important. Um, so people know, is this a thing I want to be a part of? Um, and of course, that are engaging and empowering. Um, we also want, uh, we want to prioritize sessions that embody a commitment to sharing power and uprooting legacies of harm. Um, we recognize that when we talk about the new economy, uh, we're not, you know, we're operating within a history of an old economy that uh, has done a lot of harm to a lot of people and continues to do so along lines of race, class, gender, geography. Um, and so we want to really have an eye for that when we're selecting sessions on, on how, how is this about building the new and upro uprooting the harm of the old. Um, at a technical level, we're looking for sessions that are submitted by teams of two to four people coordinated by teams of two to four people. You can certainly have a bigger team than that, um, but in terms of who we have the capacity to, to be in regular contact with, um, we want sort of two to four points of contact um, that'll sort of officially be listed. Although, you know, if you're coordinating this as a network or whatever, like we can put it in the program that it's organized by a, by a group or by individuals or both. Um, We'd love to see these be put together by folks from multiple organizations working together. Um, and we certainly love to see them coming from NEC member organizations or, or groups that include folks from NEC member organizations. 
Um, it's not a requirement. Uh, it is definitely something that we are keeping an eye out for. We want to, um, you know, we've been working with this network of groups and we're continuing to grow this network of groups for three years now. Um, I want to make sure that they have the space to, to do work together. Um, and now, do you want to talk a little bit about some concrete examples? Sure. Um, so these are just some examples that we've generated. Um, network gatherings aren't limited to this, but these are just some ideas to get um, thoughts going. Um, it could be a day-long training or a skill share. Um, they could be it could be a meeting of a of an existing network. Um, and like I said before, that could be open or closed, and um, we're hoping that this will be a space that's um, existing networks are looking and saying, oh, this is this is a useful place for us to for us to convene. Um, it could be a retreat or a meetup for people who share an identity or interest. Um, it could be regional, it could be ethnic, it could be all, all, all types of things. Um, it could be a strategy session for uh, local or regional groups dealing with a common problem that are looking to um, build unity, scale up their efforts, that type of stuff. Um, or it could be um, basically anything that, that advances the movement for a just and sustainable economy. So, um, oh. Sorry, go ahead. Um, so in terms of, you know, if you're sitting on this uh, sitting on this call and thinking this might be something that I want to do. Um, I want to go over a little bit of what's involved. So with the network gatherings, um, first of all, there's the assumption that you're going to develop and execute. If you propose it, you're going to develop and execute the content, whether that means you're facilitating it yourself, you are bringing in different speakers, you're bringing in a facilitator. Um, that, that content part is yours. That's the idea. Is we're creating the vehicle. We're, we'll do the logistical work. We'll do, uh, you know, get the space, do the fundraising, promote the conference. But this is this is sort of your your time. Um, uh, we want our coordinators to not just be working with us, but to meet one another and help us build something that's that's really a coherent whole. And so we have a. We're hosting a coordinators meeting March 5th through 6th in Buffalo. Uh, the folks at PUSH have been kind enough to help us find a space for that. Um, NEC can cover travel and housing for one person from each coordinating group to come to that. Um, and that'll be a conversation about how these things fit together and, and how do we shape and promote and build this conference together. Um, uh, if you are doing a, a network gathering, you'll be expected to help recruit participants and presenters. Um, you know, we can do a lot of outreach, but you know the people that you're trying to reach out to. And again, it can be invitational or it can be open. Um, work with us on logistics. Uh, we ask that folks do some fundraising uh, to help with scholarships and conference costs. There isn't a, sort of a set amount you need to raise this much money to be able to participate. Um, we ask that folks fundraise you know, along the lines of their capacity. So if you're a grassroots organization and you can do some grassroots fundraising and you know, throw a party in charge at the door, that's great. If you're a big 501c3 and you have a budget and you can put some money towards this, you know, we would really appreciate that in terms of you know, it's part of co-creating the space. But we'll be doing the bulk of the fundraising for the event for sure. Um, we also, uh, particularly for network gatherings, want to encourage folks um, to, to talk to their participants about ways to engage in the rest of the conference, to propose workshops, to, to really show up for the whole weekend. We don't want these to be sort of a, a side event that people go to and that don't stick around. We think it, it's important that it's part of the whole weekend. Um, next slide. And then what are we providing? Uh, obviously, we are uh, providing space for the gatherings at, at Buffalo State. Uh, a lot of marketing and outreach support. Um, our team can provide advice and support on programming or fundraising as you need it. Um, you know, we, we want to be able to raise some money here. If we don't have a lot of experience with that, we can, we can work with you. Um, you know, we want to have this session, but we don't know where we don't have the connections to the presenters we want. Um, we can try to help there as well as, as requested, right? Like we want to give you space to, to do your, your gathering. Um, 
We can certainly put some funding towards food for the event, travel and housing for your participants. We can provide a baseline of materials, um, and we can certainly provide free conference registration for folks who are coordinating tracks. Um, or for, for coordinating gatherings, and now we'll talk about the workshop tracks. Um, so yeah, tracks, I, I think um, an important point that Mike raised about the gatherings is that we're, we're looking to build things that increase connectivity and collaboration, and so we're looking to do that through the tracks as well. Um, we're hoping that tracks will um, center around either a common problem um, or around common opportunities. Um, similar to the network gatherings, they're going to be proposed and curated by uh, a volunteer committee, two to four people, ideally from um, a number of different organizations. Um, and we're really hoping that the committees and the workshops themselves um, can develop into organizing opportunities to support work that's already going on and to help launch uh, for the work in the future. Um, I'll also say that we're still figuring out our draft schedule, but we're anticipating a total of six workshop blocks um, throughout the conference for Saturday and Sunday. Um, and so uh, Tracks should probably be made up of, uh, well, they should definitely be made up of at least six, um, at least six, six workshops, probably maybe maybe up to 12. But that's, there's some wiggle room in there. And of course, it depends on how many tracks we end up uh, going with. Yeah. Um, in terms of specifically what we're looking for, it's very similar to what we're looking for in terms of network gathering. So on this slide, the top ones that are not in bold, top ones that are not in bold, those are the same as for network gathering. So I'm not going to go through those because Mike just did that. And I should also say, because somebody asked about it, this is all on our site at neweconomy.net. Uh, you go to the Common Bound tab and there's a, a page for uh, network gatherings and a page for workshop tracks that has all of its information. Mm -hmm. um, two things that are distinct about workshops that um, distinguish them from network gatherings in terms of what we're looking for are that we're looking for workshops um, or tracks that provide space for a range of experience. Um, so we anticipate that some people coming to Common Bound are, they will have gone to Common Bound in 2014, they might be uh, they might work for a member organization and they're, they really understand the new economy world or their piece of it um, and they're maybe experts, thought leaders, those people are going to be a common bound. But we're also expecting and hoping that there's going to be people who this is their first time hearing about new economy coalition, about common bound, about new economy and they're looking to learn for the very first time. So we're hoping that tracks um, will address um, that spectrum. Um, and so we'll be looking for some introductory workshops and then also um, some more advanced material. Um, and yeah, as I said before, we're hoping that the workshops will support connectivity and collaboration around a common problem, opportunity, or lever. So somebody just asked about examples, which is the next slide. Um, so these are four examples um, that came to us um, through conversations we've had with folks we've worked with in the past um, that I think are a good illustration of, of what Anad is saying about, about really focused on specific levers, specific opportunities, specific problems. And the, the level of specificity is something that we can you know, work with you to adjust and we'll probably want to talk about at the retreat in March, just trying to get everything again, feeling like it's, it's coherent and not like it's 20 different conferences going on at once. Um, but I think these generally are in the right range. Um, one that was proposed is around democratizing renewable energy. Um, there's a big opportunity here, right? Like the, the renewable sector is growing uh, at incredible rates. Um, and 
the cost of renewables is plummeting and there's an opportunity around uh, who owns that infrastructure, right? Who's going to own the clean energy economy? Is it going to be the same corporations that own the fossil fuel economy? Um, is it going to be Wall Street or can we look at new ways of, of owning that energy infrastructure and, and having it be community controlled and, and decentralized? Um, there's a lot of conversations to have within that. There's a lot of energy there. It makes a lot of sense to have that be a track. Um, a couple that are around common problems. Uh, one, we're talking to some folks about doing a track on development without displacement. You know, we've got uh, a situation where a lot of uh, there are there's a real crisis around displacement, around gentrification, and how do we reconcile that with wanting to build uh, you know cities that people want to be in, uh, where there's a real demand for housing. Um, and you have populations that never had the opportunity to leave the city. Um, we think that's an important conversation or set of conversations um, and could see that being a really nuanced track. There's some amazing work happening in Buffalo um, on that front through the, the green development zone and the community land trust that they've created. Um, there's a problem around articulating the next system. You know, new economy is in some ways kind of a placeholder term, right? If you don't like, Carl Perbit says, if you don't like corporate capitalism, and you don't like state socialism, uh, what are you arguing for? And we can talk about specific elements of it, but how do we, how do we really have a conversation about the next system? Um, that to us feels like the kind of specific problem-oriented uh, question that can, can become six to 12 workshops that, that people can be a part of and, and um, can expand you know, how they're thinking about their work, how they're, they're practicing their work in the new economy space. Um, and then one that's focused on, on sort of a specific leverage point um, is there are some folks who are really looking at, okay, so our, our federal government in the U.S. is pretty stuck. It's pretty hard to move anything through Congress. Um, how do we use cities? Can we use, how can we most effectively leverage city policy um, to build the new economy, to build community wealth, to support the kinds of alternative institutions we want to see. Um, and so that's, that's one that's really geared around uh, a leverage point. So I think these are some good examples. They get at um, the kinds of things we'd want to see. I think that you could do, you could put forward similar ideas around all sorts of things. You could put them around um, if you work on education, if you work on health, if you work on food, if uh, you know, you, you're really interested in having a conversation about the intersection of economic justice and the Black Lives Matter movement. I mean, there's, there's so many possibilities. There's so many things that we know uh, the new economy movement wants to talk about. And there's so many ways you can talk about the new economy. And we think that, that uh, picking these tracks and having people know, okay, there's this big picture conversation about the new economy. Um, but then it's also grounded in, in these specific conversations, at least for this gathering. Um, it keeps it from being totally, you know, over everybody's head. It, it, it grounds the conversation a little bit. Uh, so that was long-winded. Uh, you're sitting here thinking, okay, great, I got it. What do I do? How do I actually participate in this? Um, if I propose a track, what am I, what am I getting myself into? Uh, and Anand, if you could talk about that a little bit, that'd be great. Yeah. So, um, coordinating a track in a sense is less involved than a network gathering because coordinators are not necessarily responsible or directly responsible for providing content. Um, I'll explain exactly how that's going to work, but we're I'm expecting and hoping that coordinators will propose and, and develop workshops, but um, it's not not necessary not necessarily part of being a, a track coordinator. The work is primarily um, recruiting people to submit um, workshops um, and lead workshops, um, and uh, basically an advisory position. Um, so the core of um, the the work uh, for track coordinators is going to be developing um, the framing language for the track. Um, that's everything from the title to um, what are some of the key questions we're going to be wrestling with. Um, just 
language that how are we going to communicate what this is. Um, we're going to be holding a coordinators meeting in Buffalo um, the weekend of March 5th. And so um, we're asking that each team sends at least one representative to that meeting and participates in that. Um, as I said, there's, they're going to be recruiting participants and also session presenters. Um, and finally, reviewing proposals and making a final recommendation um, for sessions. Um, we're NEC staff is going to try to respect um, the process of the track corner news as much as possible, but we're going to reserve um, the right to make the final decision about exactly what sessions end up in the program and where. Um, but again, we're trying to do this in the spirit of collaboration, um, decentralize the entire process or a lot of this process for the conference. Um, and so we do reserve that final decision making power, but we really want to be doing this collaboratively with track coordinators. And then similar to network gatherings, there's an expectation um, or a, and a hope that people will help with fundraising um, to the extent that's appropriate or possible for you. <clears throat> um, in terms of what NEC is bringing to the table, again, it's pretty similar for, for um, the network gatherings. Um, we're basically, we're handling logistics, so um, promotion and most of the fundraising so that track coordinators can focus on content and not the kind of behind the scenes stuff. So uh, I'm going to talk a little bit about the timeline going forward. And I'm really pleased that we're on time for this call and we'll have plenty of room for your questions. Um, so the first thing I want to note is that you may have seen in an earlier email that uh, we had a January 12th deadline for submitting uh, workshop tracks and network gathering proposals. Uh, we've pushed that back a week to January 19th, 11.59 p.m. Eastern. Um, so it gives you an extra week to submit. Uh, if you want to submit earlier than that, that's great. Um, if you want to send us ideas, that's great. Um, both my and Anand's email uh, are at the, on the next slide, and we're happy to you know, be in conversation about thinking about something, I need more information, or I want to work it through further, um, happy to do that. Uh, we should be able to get back to people by early February. Um, that's our target. I think we're going to keep to that, especially because we want folks to come join us in March, in the 5th and 6th, for the coordinators retreat. Again, we're looking for one person from each team for that. Um, if you absolutely can't make it, um, we can work with that, but it's we're really trying to have close to 100% attendance uh, from each each group helping make the conference happen. We, in our experience, having done this with Allied Media, um, it was just invaluable to be able to spend some time with the other coordinators, get to know about their work, get to know about what their hopes are for the conference, and and um, build some coherence around what it is that we're all trying to put on together in July. Um, the next two dates on the timeline are probably the fuzziest. Uh, we want to put out the workshop request for proposals after the coordinators retreat, hopefully very soon after the coordinators retreat. Um, we don't have an exact date for that, but I think it'll be safe to say probably mid-March is what we're aiming for. Um, and you'll have plenty of time to review those. Um, hopefully mid-May, late May, get those recommendations into us and then over the course of six weeks between, six-ish weeks between that and the conference, um, we can line up all the logistics. Um, and again, those, those March and May dates are the ones that probably have the most flexibility. Um, and then again, the conference is July 8th to 10th, Friday to the Sunday. Um, for folks on the line from NEC member organizations, there is a, a business meeting the day after, and we hope people will, will stick around and, and, uh, participate in that. Um, but I think that about 
Oops, I'm just looking at my notes, make sure I'm not forgetting anything. Um, oh, yeah, I guess just one thing I wanted to, to say again is that, um, you know, like I said, this is our fourth major conference in the last five years, but it's the first time we're doing it this way. Uh, it's an experiment. It's an experiment that is rooted in our experience uh, participating in a process like this and also in our intentions around what we're trying to do with New Economy Coalition going forward um, around really building a more robust and interconnected and, and decentralized network. Um, but it's an experiment and we so, so appreciate everyone who uh, wants to experiment with us, who's joined this call, who's thinking about putting in a proposal um, and who wants to make this, this really important series of conversations happen in July. Yeah, so that, that does it for our part of the presentation. I want to thank everybody for joining. Um, and again, I want to reiterate what Mike was just saying and thank people for being willing to um, participate in this experiment of ours. And I, I think that um, what we're trying to build here has to, it can't just be about NEC staff. It has to really be about um, our member organizations and allies and um, creating a space by and for the new economy movement. And uh, this new format is our, uh, I think, one of our first tangible attempts at, at really trying to institutionalize that. Um, so thank you to everybody, and we'll open it up for questions. So I'm looking at uh, questions in the chat box or questions that people have submitted. Um, uh, let's see. So there's, I think this is an important question uh, about um, can we give an idea of the budget that, that folks would be fundraising for? Uh, what are the costs of housing and conference fees? And will NEC provide all of the food? Um, and I think the short answer there is that uh, we're still figuring some of that out. We have a really strong commitment to affordability and accessibility. Um, and right now what we're trying to do is, is figure out um, how do we charge enough for the conference that we can also cover the expenses of people who wouldn't otherwise be able to attend who should be there, whether that means you know, flights or housing. It's, it's a balancing act. We should know soon. Also, part of that is just waiting to hear back from the space, but we have a really strong commitment to, um, to making it affordable, and I'm sorry that, that I don't have a, a concrete number I can give you yet. Um, we will soon. Um, and food is, is part of that conversation. Um, um, in terms of the budget that folks should be fundraising for, again, there's not a, um, there's not sort of like a threshold of like, we expect everyone to be, um, you know, raising X amount of dollars. We're putting a lot of energy and resources into fundraising for this event. This is the biggest thing we do all year. Um, but we ask sort of in the spirit of co-creating the space and, and providing the space for folks to do their work, um, that they, you know, you look at like what, what's reasonable, what, what seems fair and what can you put forward? And we can have those conversations one-on-one. -on -one. Um, I should also say that I think that from sort of a nonprofit world perspective, there are definitely, if you're, if you're coordinating a session for this, there are fundraising opportunities um, outside of NEC, um, and we'd be really happy to work with folks on on those on proposals and um, things like that. So um, I, it's less of a complete answer than we'd like to be able to give at this point, but it's just the reality of where we are with the space and and with our own fundraising. Um, but I can you know give you the commitment that we have done a bunch of these, we've been able to keep them pretty affordable. Uh, we've been able to provide a lot of scholarships and um, I'll turn to Anand or Jonathan if you have anything you wanna to add to that. I think, um, I think you said it, Mike, unfortunately we don't have <laughs> the exact pricing structure for the conference yet. Um, so we can't give an exact number yet. 
Um, in the past, <clears throat> we've done, well, this year there's going to be either some form of sliding scale um, or scholarship, a combination of that or a scholarship process. Um, and so we'll be prioritizing um, coordinators um, in that, that process. Um, and yeah, it's definitely it's definitely a priority of ours, doing as much fundraising as we can to make sure that um, you know funds are not limiting people from engaging with the conference. Mm -hmm. um, let's see. Um, so there's a couple of technical questions I want to get to. Um, the January 19th proposal deadline. Um, that is the same deadline for network gatherings and tracks. Um, to clarify, that is not the deadline for specific workshop proposals. So if you want to do one session within a track, um, after we've had the March retreat and um, really shaped, you know, what do we want this thing to look like, we'll then put out a public RFP that says we're looking for workshops in these, you know, five, six, seven tracks. Um, and there'll be an opportunity to propose specific sessions. Um, but for January 19th, we're looking for folks who want to be on those coordinating committees, who want to be reviewing those proposals, and who want to be holding day-long gatherings before the conference starts. Um, so I hope that's clarifying. And then similar, there was a related question. Um, is it true that someone might propose a workshop and then if it's accepted, someone else may be the coordinator who develops and implements it. Um, I don't totally understand this question. I, um, someone, so on the network gatherings, if you propose a network gathering um, and it's accepted, then, and that's, those are the gatherings that are the day before the conference starts, or before the sort of the public, the, the, the bigger conference starts, all the workshops and the plenaries. Uh, Friday afternoon, um, you're responsible for implementing that, and you're welcome to have other people, you know, bring in other people to do it. You can play an active facilitating role, or you can just play a coordinating role. Um, in terms of the tracks, um, we are. It, it, there wouldn't be the case where, when we got to to March, to the point where we're putting an RFP out. I don't think it would get to the point where you would propose a workshop and we'd say, yes, we want this workshop, but we want somebody else to run it. We just have a, we have our um, track committees that are saying, you know, this workshop makes sense, this workshop doesn't, we want to talk to these folks more and shape this thing. Um, but I don't think the situation that you're putting forward, as I understand it, um, no, workshops. Yeah, I don't think that that, uh, that would happen. Can I address that, Mike? Yeah. I think I agree that it's, I, I don't see that happening with workshops. <clears throat> I think it's um, possible that we might get applications for network gatherings or tracks, and um, we might say this is, this is a great um, proposal. They should be working with this other organization as well, or maybe there's a way that they can coordinate with this other gathering. This track. I think um, a goal of ours, as we've said a couple times in this presentation, is to be um, really centering and, and pushing for collaboration and um, greater connectivity. And so I think there may be instances when um, we're going to encourage people to be bringing more people into the fold. But I agree with Mike that I don't anticipate a situation where we'll get a proposal and then we'll say that's great, but we want to have somebody else do it. Mm -hmm. um, so a couple of good questions here. Uh, one, how are you prioritizing issues and initiatives related, related to race and equity? Um, and then a second that was similar. Um, uh, will there be prioritization of gatherings and tracks be for POC, working class, indigenous, LGBTQ folks, etc.? cetera? Um, I think the the short answer is, is yes, absolutely. That's been a strong focus of NEC for quite a while and was a focus with the Common Bound Conference that we did uh, in 2014. Um, representation matters. Um, 
uh, racial justice, gender justice, these things are essential for, for building the new economy. We talked before about those being priorities. So yes, I want to 100% affirm that. Um, yeah. I don't know, Anand, if you want to add anything to that? Yes. <laughs> Is that it? That's it. Okay, cool. So, yes. Um, uh, I'm not sure if I missed this, but how many network gatherings are you expected expecting and how many tracks? Um, we don't know for sure. Um, I, you know, we're looking at... Um, we're still trying to confirm exactly how many rooms we can get from Buffalo State. We're still finalizing the agenda. I think I would be surprised if it was more than 10 or 12 workshop tracks. I think that, that feels like a lot. Um, I think it's going to be at least six, so probably somewhere in that range. Um, and that's the thing we want to be in, in conversation with folks about. Uh, like I said, we've never done this before, so we don't know. Uh, we don't know how many we're going to get, but I think eight, nine, 10, 11, that feels probably about right. Um, but we got to see what comes in. I'll also, I'll also say that um, we've gotten, so far, we've gotten more proposals for tracks than for network gatherings. Mm -hmm. So it's possible. I think um, I'm expecting to get a bunch more than we've gotten already, but it's possible that we might have different numbers for each as well. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And for the network gatherings, I think we want to have, that's an area where we want to have a lot, you know, I think is we have the space for people and it's a conversation that folks want to be a part of and we have the resources, we want to make it happen. Um, we want to get it in the program. We just don't, you know, right now we haven't gotten a lot of proposals for network gatherings. They've mostly been for tracks. Um, that could change. Um, let's see. Um, can we submit proposals for both network gatherings and workshop tracks with the intention of coordinating one? Of course. Um, yes, you can submit for both. Um, I think we'd want to have a conversation about, you know, we want to have a conversation at that point if they both looked really good, just one on one about. You know, your capacity and which makes the most sense and how it fits in with the rest of the conference. But certainly you can submit for both. You can submit multiple ideas. Um, yeah, by all means. Anand, can you see these? I, I realize that I'm just like picking them off. But... I, don't, I don't think I can see them. Okay. Um, okay, that's a personal question. Um, a couple, couple of specific requests. I'm really thrilled to see that people have ideas and want to participate. Um, someone asked about participating from a distance. Uh, in the past, we have been able to live stream our plenaries. Uh, I hope that we will be able to do that again. Um, we haven't quite gotten that far, uh, but we've done it for every major event we've done in the past. Uh, so I'm, I'm hopeful we'll be able to do that. Um, this is an interesting question. Will we be able to pay conference fees in time dollars or complementary currencies? Uh, certainly something to think about, not something that we've talked about. Um, interest in involving faith communities. Uh, I would say certainly there are a number of faith-based groups in New Economy Coalition, active in New Economy Coalition, um, and yeah, would, would love to involve uh, faith-based groups in the conference. I expect to. Um, yeah, let's see. So that looks like the bulk of the questions we've gotten. Um, folks want to slide a few more in. I see the personal questions um, and I would recommend you just email Anand and I. Our emails are right here on the slide. Uh, folks, you know, see, I see you, Len and Scott, um, and there may be a couple others. Um, shoot us an email and happy to talk more.
we're good should we should we close it up yeah if that's it if that's it for the questions I think we can wrap and I'll yeah I'll reiterate what Mike said that um, if there's any more questions feel free to email um, he or I at any point with any questions awesome thank you so much really appreciate everybody taking the time this afternoon uh, and uh, hope to see you all in July if not sooner thanks everyone thank you